Check out this week's video as Mo Ahmed is going to teach us the top five mistakes not to make when building your home. When it comes to building a home, it can be scary to make a wrong move. And even though they say that mistakes are the best way to learn, this is not the time to test that theory. Area sales manager Mo Ahmed is going to teach us how to avoid the top biggest mistakes that cost time and money when you're building your dream home. Hey Mo, thanks for joining us here today. Thanks Nicole, it's great to be here. So let's get right to the very, very first one. What is the number one mistake for buyers to avoid? You know what, Nicole, I find the number one mistake is understanding how the process actually works. So you have find a lot of people coming into the show home, you know, looking for a home, looking for the right lot, which is great because we always have that land and we do have that selection of homes. But understanding how the process works, I find a lot of the buyers just are not sure. And uh, let me get down to it and kind of give you some examples. So let's say you're looking for a home that's about $400,000 and you want to put 5% as your down payment. So the initial start when you find that right lot or you want to find that right home and house and you want to proceed with an offer, we require $1,000 down. To hold the lot and that same $1,000 we can also use to proceed with the offer. And when we proceed with the offer with $1,000, it is, um, it's only the offer, it's 100% refundable and it's subject to finance, which is mortgage approval. Then usually it goes to the bank, which takes about 10 to 14 days. And once the bank sends the mortgage approval, that's when you come and you remove conditions on your home. And uh, when you remove conditions, you basically bring that 19,000, the remaining of the 5%, and we remove conditions on the house. So there are several stages throughout the build of the home. Why don't you walk us through stage one? So stage one basically is the fun part. That part takes about three to four months approximately. And that's the part where the builder starts to get permits, finalizes the plans. And then the client, the exciting part is they come and choose the exterior colors of the home. Uh, they go to our design center and choose the interior colors, uh, their lighting package, appliances, etc. That's um, the fun part. That's the fun part. And then they have to have patience for stage two, right? And then stage two, <laughs> and that's the exciting part where the building process starts and the construction of the home. Uh, during the construction of the home, uh, the house being built, there is uh, two walkthroughs that uh, we do. So walkthrough number one is, and what I mean by that is uh, we take our clients, they wear their hard hats, they wear their steel toe boots, they come on site with our site supervisors and myself, and we do a walkthrough during the rough and stage. So rough and stage meaning when the electrical and the plumbing are done. So homeowners can't just walk onto the property whenever they feel like it. That's correct, Nicole. Got it. And what's walkthrough number two? So stage walkthrough number two, then again, during the construction, um, we get to a stage called the cabinet stage. And that's when they come in and they install the cabinets. So during the cabinet stage and your possession date, um, you know, you're looking now between just to say 60 to 90 days. So we come with the clients and we do the walkthrough during the cabinet. So we get to see the cabinets now finishing to make sure the colors are correct, to make sure that's what they had, of course, ordered. Um, and we run through the entire house again, uh, just to make sure, you know, the exciting part. Now they can see a home almost finished. And they can take a tape measure and measure things so they can see where their furniture is going to go Absolutely. and stuff like that. Absolutely. How high their bar stools need to be at Absolutely. that island. Yeah. Perfect. And final stage? And the final stage. So the final stage, basically what happens is you get a letter sent to you with uh, two dates. Your pre-occupancy date, which is your last walkthrough before you take possession, and then your possession date. And then there is some items on that letter, just some for the client things to do. So, you know, number one, um, you know, let your mortgage broker or your bank uh, know when your possession date is. Uh, number two, you know, email the lawyer and let them know, hey, I received my possession date, this is when it's gonna be, so they can schedule the time uh, for you to come in. Uh, number three is getting insurance on your home. So obviously before you uh, enter your home, you're gonna need home insurance to, with the lawyer, so get your insurance of the home. And then number four, you know, call your Epcor, Direct Energy, you know, your utilities, and get those uh, uh, set up for usually the day after possession. So the pre-occupancy walkthrough, basically you come in with the homeowners and the site supervisor and you walk through the entire house, you know, learning a little bit more about the HRV, the high efficiency furnace, you know, how to change the filter and put it back in, you know, the hot water uh, tank and just going through the entire home in general. 
And then what happens? So 10 to 14 days after your pre-occupancy, that's when your possession date comes and that's the day that you get your keys of your home. So that's the number one biggest mistake, but it's not the first step in the process, is it? No, not understanding your financial requirements is also a very important step. So what does that mean? So, I mean, best, best thing to do is touch base with your banker and or your mortgage broker and you want to know how much you actually qualify for because that's very important especially when you're looking at homes and you're walking into these beautiful homes and you're not sure you know you know can i can i buy this or can i get this right you want to know what you qualify for now it doesn't mean if you want you know you qualify for half a million dollars you have to spend that but at least you know that's kind of where you are so understanding uh what you qualify for uh knowing what your credit score is your total debt service ratio so the banks use a dip formula just to find out what your uh, debt ratio is um, payment options um, you know your monthly payments versus your bi-weekly payments and the types of mortgages uh, especially when you're doing a new build there is so much to understand when it comes to the financials like you had mentioned so it's important to work with a qualified trustworthy mortgage professional and if you're a first-time home buyer that might be someone that you need as a reference so they can ask you for a referral of somebody that you trust absolutely we work with all the major banks and uh, you know a lot of brokers so definitely they can always reach out and you know we can provide them um, with the best and you know we start with whichever you know I always ask the question is you know, who do you bank with and you know and if they bank with a certain bank you know we can definitely pass them on some information to get them started speaking of financing another big mistake to avoid is not understanding the interest rate and how that actually works so when you're building a home you're, the construction of the build is definitely much longer so you know we'll have our clients or people that walk through they'll assume okay let's give an example the interest today's interest rate is 2.75 so when you are buying a brand new home that unfortunately will not be your rate um, so major banks will hold your rate up to 12 months but that rate may be for example 3.25 versus your 2.75 today's rate but that's actually not your rate so usually before the home is completed let's just say about three months before the home is completed the bank then will take today's best rate and lock you into that but if the rate tomorrow jumps to four percent at least you're locked into a 3.25 percent rate and that's something very important for the clients to understand um, and not to worry about because every time they see the higher rate they can okay you know this is what i'm getting but it's, it's it's not what you're getting for example a client that comes in and he's uh he has an interest rate hold up to 90 days but he sees that home that's under construction falls in love with it but unfortunately it'll be done in about six months well he goes back to his bank and because we have a preferred builder rate they're able to extend that rate hold up to six months or nine months right and he can buy that home with today's rate and interest rates can have a lot of bearing in terms of factoring what your monthly payment is, right? Correct. Correct. You know, another great example, uh, Nicole, is you know, clients will walk into the, any home and say, okay, you know what, my price point is three seventy-five. dollars Let's give an example. And then they find their dream home that they really want to be in, but it's 400000 And what's the first thing that pops into your head? It's $25,000 more. But where does that interest play, play a role? On today's interest rates, that's only about eighty dollars to almost $100 a month difference. So maybe you went into the process thinking that you were going to buy a town home, but you can actually bump up to purchasing a detached home that better suits your family's lifestyle. Absolutely. Mistake number four, don't think too small. Uh, make sure you select that floor plan that suits your lifestyle. You know, whether it's three or four bedrooms, uh, whether you require a bonus room upstairs, uh, walk through pantry and one of the biggest and one of the I find the most important in today's world is a den or a flex room on the main floor uh, you know a great example I had a couple the other day and they were looking at purchasing a home and you know their mother or father you know come from out of town to visit so you can change that room into a, a bedroom where they can stay okay Mo that was mistakes one through four but we said we were gonna give the top five so what is mistake number five to avoid so Nicole, mistake number five is choosing the floor plan versus the right builder. That's something very important. You want someone you can definitely get along with during the building construction. You know, building construction is all based on long-term relationships. Uh, you know, through the construction, there's going to be ups and downs, and you want that person to be with by your side the entire time. Do your research. Schedule meetings before you write the initial offer. And you know, if you have to schedule a second appointment, schedule a second appointment. Uh, ask questions about the home builder. Uh, another big one is ask for reviews. 
you know, check up the reviews on social media uh, with their company, ask for reviews, ask for references. I'm happy to give out references to speak to actual homeowners who have bought and, and purchased this home. Um, and it's great because you can speak to them on one-to-one -one level and actually find out about the construction and how it all went. Thank you so much, Mo. These are amazing ways that home buyers can avoid big mistakes when they're building their dream home. Thank you so much, Nicole. It was a pleasure. So if you are a house hunter considering new construction, be sure to like and subscribe to be notified of all of our upcoming content. Thanks for watching and see you next time.